Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Potomac and Chesapeake Association for College Admissions Counseling Virtual College Fair. We're so excited to have you participating in this event. We have some fantastic schools with us here today. My name is Kelsey and I will be your facilitator. Before we get started, here are just a few housekeeping announcements. Your cameras and microphones are turned off so our panelists cannot see or hear you. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions for presenters at any time throughout the session. This presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com slash PCACAC. Now, I'd like to turn it over to our first presenter, and that is Bloomsburg University of Pennsylvania. We're one of the largest public universities near Northeastern Pennsylvania, uh, but on the same note, uh, we're a mid-sized public university at roughly 9,000 students. So students really get to know the professors, they get to know students, but on any given day, being a mid-sized uh, university, you get to meet someone new. Uh, we also have 250 plus clubs and 76,000 uh, alumni and growing. Of course, we hope to add to that with you. Uh, so I'm going to show you some photos of our iconic Husky statue and our iconic Carver Hall. And of course, we tell students on your first day of classes and graduation, you'll want to get a photo in front of the Husky statue and uh, our Carver Hall building as well. So we have five different colleges, and I'm going to uh, mainly highlight the College of Liberal Arts tonight but we also have the College of Education, College of Science Technology, Ziegler College of Business, and then our Honors College. We're always innovating, adding something new. So we just added 58 majors. Uh, so always growing at the university. So let me highlight some majors in the College of Liberal Arts. I'm not going to name all the majors. Again, so I'm not going to name all the majors. So we have Art History, Art Studio, so that includes uh, drawing, fabric design, graphic print design, graphic web design, painting, photography, printmaking, sculpture. We also have music, so that's audio, video recording, liberal arts, music education. Uh, we have theater and dance, design and technology, um, integrated, which would uh, be you get a broad education in terms of production. So you get delve into all aspects of production in terms of theater. And then performance uh, is another example. We also have language and cultures, history, uh, economics, uh, communication studies, media and journalism, um, social work, psychology, uh, political science. You can also get minors uh, with the College of Liberal Arts, such as art history, art studio, uh, creative writing, dance, um, emergent media, uh, are some different examples of minors within the College of Liberal Arts. So I'm showing the different colleges, and there you can see some of our classroom space at Bloomsburg University, just to highlight that. So Bloomsburg's on a hill, so we like to say your onward is upward, and Bloomsburg is located in Bloomsburg, Pennsylvania, which is the only incorporated town in the state of Pennsylvania, so that's a fact about the town. And then we have pictures of Carver Hall, our iconic 
building our academic quad where all your classes would be centralized if you choose to come to the university and then our library building and there's our upper campus athletic facilities our student services center which we have uh, broad uh, student services to really um, support our students, uh, a broad support network at the university, and then also our Greenlee Center, Downtown Alumni Affairs uh, and Career Development. Uh, there are some of our lower campus residence facilities, the one on the right is on upper campus, and then you can see students um, in a traditional residence style below. And in terms of all our residences, so the, all the student rooms are slated by fall 2021 to have air conditioning in them. We do guarantee parking um, for every year students are at the university. And we do provide a microwave and fridge um, in the student rooms as well. And there's an example of a traditional style. We also have suite style. We also have apartment style at Bloomsburg University. So you're seeing some photos of that. We have 16 plus dining options. So this is an example of our commons, which is buffet style. Uh, we also have uh, different fast food, fast casual chains um, that are names that students may recognize. Um, so they have a lot of brand recognition um, and there's multiple different uh, fast food and fast casual options on our campus. Uh, part of those 16 plus dining options. We have over 250 plus clubs. So there's concerts, speakers, events on campus. So we have a vibrant student life at our university. Uh, we also have a student recreation center, which has two indoor rock walls, multiple basketball courts, an indoor track, a squash courts, dance studio, a cardio and weight room. And we do provide students the option to sign up uh, for someone that will uh, help students with personal training as an option uh, if they choose to do that. Um, we do have a Division II athletics, a Division I men's wrestling, and here's some different examples in terms of athletics. So just showing that on the screen. And then we also have our upper campus athletic facilities. You can see one of the apartment complexes. Not everything is in this photo. So I just want to highlight that. And here's some different information about financial aid just to highlight that. Um, so here's information on how to apply. And you should go to admissions.bloomu.edu for all application information. Of course, we're SAT, ACT optional at our university. And um, for uh, incoming seniors for fall 2021, our application opens in August. It takes two to four weeks to make a decision. We're rolling admissions. And in terms of GPA, uh, SAT, remember we're SAT, ACT test optional, but that's some averages. And this is how you can tour Bloomsburg from home ultimately. So definitely check out our social media and all that information. Thank you so much. Thank you, Andrew. Next up, we are gonna hear from Elizabeth Town College. All right, hello everyone. So my name is Monica Venturella. I'm one of the assistant directors of admissions here at E-Town. So I'm gonna talk all about how to become a Blue Jay. Uh, so to get started, I do wanna go over our different schools that we offer and the listing of all our different majors. Now I always recommend to students, do not try and pick a major from the slide here. Best thing you can do is really go to our website and find more about what we offer. But we do have lots of majors and seven different schools within them. We really tend to lean more on our um, STEM majors, so engineering, math, and science. But we also have very strong majors within occupational therapy, music therapy, and Japanese. So it really is something for everyone. Um, again, I always recommend to students, check out our website for all the majors. But just, this is just a very brief listing of all of them that we have at E-Town. Something that really makes us stand out between us and other colleges is the fact that we offer signature learning experiences. So what signature learning is, these are things that take you guys outside the classroom. So things like research, internships, study abroad, community-based learning, as well as a capstone experience. Every single student at E-Town is guaranteed to do at least two of these before they graduate. Most of the time, you'll end up doing more than them. 
Uh, for myself as an alum, I graduated with five of these. I did not come in thinking I was gonna do five. Uh, it kind of happened as I worked throughout my major and found more things that I was actually interested in. Within our internship program, we do really try to get you guys in internships by sophomore year at the very earliest. Um, so typically it's gonna be sophomore, junior year, um, as well as senior year. You'll see a lot of these different signature learning experiences come into your program. Because they're built in, you guys don't have to worry about it, which makes it even easier for you guys. There's also lots of different ways you can have fun on campus, because as much as you know, college is about learning, you also need to have some fun. So we are uh, Division Three athletics. We have 24 different athletic teams, as well as over 76 different clubs and organizations. There is seriously something for everyone on our campus. So whether you are interested in majoring in chemistry, but you also play lacrosse, and you also want to get involved in student government, go for it. There seriously is nothing stopping you here. Um, for myself, I was also an athlete, got involved in music. So what's really nice in the fact that I had that balance from the very beginning, and I was able to get involved in things that I want to get involved in, not just what I thought I needed to be involved in. So next, I want to briefly go over our application process. So you'll hear a lot about these things today, uh, but for our application process, it is pretty simple. So first step is to apply. We're open on the COM application as well as the ETON application. Either one works for us. I have zero preference either way. Get an application in. That's all we care about. From the application, we do need your official high school transcript, one recommendation letter from your counselor, from coach, from anyone who's um, at your high school that you really think is going to show you really well. A writing sample, so why each town, why your major, very short paragraphs there, and then the school report. So typically, once we get all that in, and it's a free application, so we don't need uh, any payment for that, you'll typically hear back from us within about two to three weeks. Um, going along with that, we are also test optional. So we tend to look at more GPA. If you have SATs and ACTs, we look at them as if it benefits you, we should consider them. So two to three weeks later, you're gonna hear back from us. During that time, I always recommend to attend events, ask questions about E-Town, and you still have until May 1st to officially decide. So if you get everything in, honestly, by this time, we've already had acceptances rolling out, which is fantastic. Um, but students should already know if they've been accepted to E-Town if they've applied earlier. So once we accept you to E-Town, then we wanna give you some merit-based scholarship. This is all based off of everything you guys submit to us on the application. So right now they range from 12 to $18,000, three different ranges there. Uh, and we are at around $47,000 per year, total cost here. Now, not one student pays $47,000 to actually go to E-Town. Most students end up more in the $20,000 to $22,000 range. So the scholarship will help you guys out a lot, as well as our other scholarships, including Mosaic, for any student who goes above and beyond in any form of diversity initiatives, music performance for any student, regardless of major, who wants to get involved in music. And then my personal favorite, which is the STAMP scholarship. The STAMP scholarship is a full tuition scholarship that we award to around 10 students per year. Um, and we also offer financial aid. So financial aid becomes available on October 1st via the FAFSA. Definitely recommend filling out to all of your colleges because you never know what you can get from the government, but also from your colleges. That's really where the cost can come down through the financial aid process. And you can see over 96% of ETON students receive some form of financial aid each year, which is fantastic. We don't want you paying that full sticker price. We want it to be coming a lot less than that full sticker price. Next, I want to mention some specialty programs and interviews. So we do have an honors program that we do require an interview for. All we ask is that you come and interview with us, chat about why you want to be a part of the program. If you're interested in occupational therapy, physician assistant, or music, we also have select um, interview processes for those as well. Just something to keep in mind as you guys work throughout the process. And then transferring in of credits. So of course you guys have worked hard throughout high school, AP courses, IB, dual enrollment, we will take them in for both class and credit. Uh, so you can see the breakdown there, AP a four or five, IB a five or higher, and dual enrollment a C minus or better. And we'll take it in for both class and credit. Next thing that you guys can do to us is visit. Best thing you can do is visit, do an in-person visit, check us out online, whatever you guys need to do to get your questions answered. I'll also throw my information into the chat, but thank you guys so, so much for being here today. Thanks, Monica. Next up, we are gonna hear from Carlo University.
Good evening. My name is Stephanie Demelon, and I am an assistant director of enrollment for Carlo University. And as we like to say, Cade Me La Falcha, which um, is 100,000 welcomes because we like to welcome everyone to our campus. Carlo is a small private Catholic university offering excellent professional and liberal arts programs. We were founded by the Sisters of Mercy in 1929, and we are committed to service, social justice, and we are welcoming to everyone. Carlo, by the numbers, we currently have 1,300 undergraduate students. We boast a 10 to 1 student to faculty ratio, and our average class size is 15 to 20, which means that your career goals take center stage. We offer 14 varsity athletic teams, and we are located on 14 acres in the Oakland neighborhood of Pittsburgh. 50 undergraduate programs of study are offered, and we are proud to say that 98% of our alumni are employed or are seeking an advanced degree uh, within six months of graduation. Our signature programs in nursing and healthcare, they are known as our signature programs because they tend to be our larger, more popular majors where we are considered leaders within the region that we are located. So obviously we have nursing, we also have biology, chemistry, health sciences, healthcare management, nursing, the BSN or the RN to BSN and respiratory therapy. We also offer unique certifications um, and majors in things like cardiovascular perfusion and intraoperative neuromonitoring. Our signature programs within the helping professions include art therapy preparation, where students can go on to graduate school and become an, a certified art therapist, early childhood education and early development and learning. Those programs are supported by our Carlo um, uh, Campus Laboratory School, which is located right on our campus. It is a private kindergarten through eighth grade school, as well as our child care facility, which is also located right on our campus. And we boast robust programs in psychology as well as social work. Within the creative arts and expression area, we offer art with various tracks, things such as ceramics, um, computer animation, art history. We offer communication, creative writing, as well as an excellent English major. Beyond the classroom, our students um, take the opportunity to uh, be uh, leaders with civic engagement and service learning opportunities undergraduate research, internships and professional work experiences, study abroad, student leadership, campus ministry, residence life, and student clubs and organizations, all of which are designed to help you hone your leadership uh, skills. As I mentioned, we boast 14 varsity sports teams and we are USCAA and NAIA affiliated and we are in the River States Conference. Pittsburgh is our city and Oakland is our home. So if you look at this photograph, the city of Pittsburgh kind of sits sort of towards the back of the photograph and Carlo's right in front. So we're not that far away. Pittsburgh has been named one of America's most liv livable cities, uh, excuse me, a couple of times, I believe. And we are home to numerous Fortune 500 headquarters and more than 50 renowned healthcare uh, uh, facilities. And we also boast a world-class cultural and arts community. Oakland is our home, and we are located in Pittsburgh's Innovation Corridor, known as the Eds, Meds, and Tech District. We are, we, uh, within Oakland, we have one of the highest concentrations of college-age students in the United States. And because of our location, exceptional internships and professional work experiences are all around you. It, uh, regarding admissions and financial aid, if you choose to apply to Carlo, you will be assigned a personal enrollment counselor such as myself. You are welcome to apply for free both through the common application or by logging onto our website and creating a Bridge to Carlo account. We work on rolling admissions and for this upcoming academic year, we are test optional although it is important to note that some majors do require a minimum cumulative grade point average. Our merit scholarships are up to $20,000 a year. We are able to offer athletic scholarships. We have a very robust honors program, which is complementary to any of our majors on our campus. We also offer a Catholic high school award, a legacy award, and a college in high school award. And if you choose um, to fill out the FAFSA and you include Carlo, 
Of course, there's always the possibility of additional grants, loans, and work study. And our federal school code is 003303. So don't be shy, connect with us. You're welcome to call us or email us at admissions at carlo.edu. You're welcome to connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we hope to see you soon. Thanks, Stephanie. Next up, we are gonna hear from Washington and Jefferson College. Hi, friends. My name is Dylan Gerald. I'm an Associate Director of Admission at Washington and Jefferson College. And we are really a place where change makers get their start. Um, located in the rolling hills of Southwestern Pennsylvania. We're about 30 minutes south of my friends at Carlo. Um, and so there are a lot, of, um, a lot of advantages to being very close to the city, um, but still being able to kind of step away um, and be able to, to breathe without the ruckus, I guess. Um, W&J was founded in 1781 as two separate institutions, Washington Academy and Jefferson College. Um, and the two were actually merged together in 1865, um, Washington and Jefferson College. So our motto today is thriving together. Together we thrive. Um, as far as academics go, we are a pretty small institution. We have about 1,150 students and um, you really will get to know your professors and really all of your classmates as well. Um, we like to make sure that there's no room to hide um, in the class, so most of our classes have less than 20 students in them. One really big benefit of attending WNJ is that every student is going to have two areas of academic um, study. So that could be a double major, a major and a minor, or any combination of those types of things. Um, but the whole idea is to, is to have a practical program and then to have a liberal, a liberating program. Um, some examples of that might be public policy and environmental science or biology and Spanish, really just to help you use both sides of your brain um, and have something that you want to go into a career for and also something that you um, just have an interest in and that you want to study more. We also have a number of special programs and pre-professional programs, so we really do a lot with pre-health and pre-law. Um, and then we also have a 3-2 engineering program with Case Western, Columbia, Washington University, and University of Pittsburgh. One very unique thing to WNJ is the Magellan Project, and that's a way for students to complete any kind of academic work over the summer um, for three to eight weeks and have it fully funded by the college. Um, my friend Clara over here on the right, she actually went to Morocco and Spain. And during her time there, she um, went from Tangier up to Barcelona and then back and really got an idea of how um, immigrants are treated in those countries. Um, and then whenever she came back to the campus, she was able to present on that information, which was really kind of interesting. Um, so that was a really unique thing that she was able to do. And she made that whole, she designed that whole trip by herself. In addition to having the Magellan Project, which is how a good number of our students choose to travel. It's not really for the faint of heart because you do go by yourself. So we also offer um, your traditional study abroad semester long, and we have a J term, which is a way for students to um, spend two weeks in January with a class, um, most of the time being abroad. Um, one example of this is a, um, instead of doing like your intro to theater course, you could do a, a theater tour of London for two weeks and go watch like 13 shows um, and get credit for that class. So just a really great way to kind of um, expand your boundaries and really um, kind of get out of your comfort zone of just being in the US. Although we do love our students to go off and have some really great experiences, um, we do have a lot kind of going on on our campus as well. We have over 70 organizations and 800 leadership opportunities which is a lot for such a small school. And um, we do have a lot of performing arts and division three athletics. There are 26 teams um, at WNJ and we really have a long tradition of winning. Um, so we're always at the top of our conference, which is the president's athletic conference. Um, and yeah, they just, they do a great job. Whenever you come to WNJ as a new student, um, 
really having a strong support system is really important to us. And one thing that we promise to every student is that you will have a relationship rich experience. So part of that is having a holistic advising program, including not only your academic advisor, but also a peer advisor, um, a student success consultant, and a um, professional and career advisor as well. So you'll have several, a whole team of people really dedicated to making sure that you are having a successful college experience from day one. Um, those are not opt-in processes. Those are guaranteed and required for every student who attends WNJ. Because we have such a strong advising program, um, over 97% of our students have um, jobs or are in grad school by the time they leave us. Um, and we have very high acceptance rates to um, grad schools. Pre-health and pre-law are listed here at 90%, but um, really most of our programs have 90% acceptance rates. Um, so, you know, wherever you really want to go, we're pretty much going to get you there. Um, just quickly, as far as admission and the application process goes, um, you can choose to do Common App or the WNJ Leadership App, and all that we require is your transcript. WNJ has been score optional for about 10 years now, and we'll continue to do that for really the rest of time. <laughs> um, and then one other thing we really like to look at is demonstrated interest. So I encourage you to come on a visit. Um, decisions are released in two weeks. We do have deadlines and our scholarships are here. They're also posted on our website. So I encourage you to go to washjeff.edu um, slash future students to see that information. Lastly, financial aid, write these dates down, they're very important, um, but every student uh, receives some kind of financial aid at WNJ. And that's all that I have. Thanks, Kelsey. Thank you, Dylan. Next up, we are gonna hear from Waynesburg University. Hi, everyone. I'm gonna get my screen shared here. There we go. My name's Emily Smelly. I am the assistant director here at Waynesburg University. I'm super excited to be hanging out um, with you guys today. Hopefully in the next five or so minutes, I can tell you all the things you need to know about Waynesburg. Um, but to go ahead and get started, we're Private Christian Liberal Arts University. We're located in Waynesburg, Pennsylvania, which is just 20 minutes down the road from Washington and Jefferson, and probably about 40-ish minutes down the road from Carlo in Pittsburgh. So um, not too far from our friends up that way. Um, we were founded in the 1800s, and our mission here in Waynesburg is to educate students to make connections between their faith, their learning, and their serving. So that's one of our goals um, and the pillars that we try to intertwine for you while you're here on campus. So as for faith on campus, we have 150 plus different events that take place each year. That could be guest lectures coming on campus. We have weekly chapel services, small group Bible studies, uh, mission trips, service trips, study abroad options, um, tons of things for you to get involved with um, here for your service. Um, so faith, and then here's a little bit about our learning, some quick facts. We have 70 plus um, different major concentrations. Five of those are what we call integrated, so bachelor's and master's degree programs. Um, and those programs are athletic training, business counseling, criminal investigation, and education. Essentially, during your um, senior year, you can start taking grad school classes. Um, and by the time you graduate, you can have maybe a year or so left um, of classes to complete your master's degree. Our fact student to faculty ratio is 13 to 1, and our average class size is about 16 students. So very one-on-one, -on -one. your professors really get to know you, um, which is something I really appreciated during my time here at Waynesburg. So you have your glasses on. Here's a list of all of our majors and minors. Please um, check this out, but just know if you head to waynesburg.edu, you can hop on to see this listed out with more um, in-depth information about each of these majors and the things that they're doing within those programs. I will let you know that our top five majors um, is our nursing, for sure. Nursing's our number one major. We've had 100% pass rate um, of the NCLEX. Um, next, I think we're ranked number two in the state of Pennsylvania state of Pennsylvania for that program um, and coming in second for our top major is criminal justice and we're also ranked two in the state of Pennsylvania um, in that program as well. Um, next would be forensic science, business, education, communication. I think those are probably our top five-ish six uh, majors here on campus. Again, if you head to wadesburg.edu, you can check out um, this list of majors and minors there um, with some more in-depth information, but I wanted to be sure to include this in here for you. 
Um, so that's that. Tying in with the learning, I'm not sure about you guys, but I'm a hands-on um, learner. I enjoy sitting in the classroom, taking in all that information, but it's nice to put it to practice. Um, so here's just some quick pictures, I guess, of some of our majors where they're putting to practice what they're learning in the classroom. Criminal justice students, we have a CSI center on campus where we'll do mock crime scenes, home invasions, blood spatter analysis. Our communication students, um, sports broadcasting students, we have a TV studio where they'll do sports coverage, broadcasting our news, things like that. Our business students have a live trading stock room. Um, our athletic training students are paired up in the AT clinic and with one of our sports teams. Our nursing students are put in um, to our nursing sim lab. And then of course, going out and about doing their clinical rotations around um, the Waynesburg area and in Pittsburgh. Again, those are just kind of top of the head of you know, what students are doing with putting their um, hands and feet to practice with what they're learning in the classroom. So jump and shift just a little bit. Here's a list of our athletics here on campus. We are division three, we're part of the NCAA, uh, President's Athletic Conference. Um, so here's a list of our men and women's sports. Um, if interested in getting involved, you're able to head to our website and fill out a questionnaire to get in contact and at least sending in your contact information um, to coaches. I highly recommend getting involved. Um, I was able to get involved during my time here at Waynesburg. So something I super um, appreciated um, and I think you would benefit from that too. I also wanted to put on here for you guys um, just a breakdown of our scholarship. So to give you an idea, our application is available for free online at waynesburg.edu. Um, once students apply and you send in your transcripts, um, test scores are optional this year. Once we get those though, you'll be awarded one of our achievement awards. And that could range anywhere from about $6,000 up to $16,000. Again, that's based off of just your GPA or your GPA and test scores, whichever way you apply. And this scholarship would be yours all four years coming off of our tuition. Our tuition's right around $38,000, $39,000 for a whole year. Um, that'll be everything included for you. Tuition, room and board, meal plans, fees, housing, all those big ugly numbers are in that total. Uh, but this scholarship would be yours all four years coming off of that tuition for you. In addition to this, we also have some competitive scholarships that'll be available October 1st. Um, so if you apply and are accepted, you're able to look into our competitive scholarships that are available. Um, and those would tack on to these scholarships as well. So opportunities for you to have more information and, and scholarship opportunity. Uh, I do recommend you guys to visit campus. We are open for personal visits. So if you guys are um, around the area, maybe you'll come up this way to check out uh, Waynesburg, W and J and Carlo. I'd highly recommend it. Uh, personal visits are always nice. You can pop onto campus, see what it looks like, what it would be like to be a student um, at, at Waynesburg, um, walk around campus. I think that's one of the most beneficial parts of the college search is actually stepping foot on campuses. Um, so Waynesburg, we're open for those kinds of visits. We'll have group visits available. Um, and personal visit options as well. So if you can head to waynesburg.edu, you can check out that information there. Um, that was basically all the things that I wanted to go over quickly with you guys. I did put on some information here um, for contacts for you to have, but I wish you guys the best in your college search. If there's any Thanks, Emily. That I hope um, time. Thank you. Next up, we are going to hear from Drexel University. Thank you, friends. Good evening, everyone. My name is Kevin Murray, and I am an assistant director of undergraduate admissions here at Drexel in Philadelphia. I'm also an alum of the university. I graduated in 2015 with a degree from our College of Business. I'm thrilled to be here to chat a little bit about Drexel today and hopefully answer any questions that I can for you. Um, this descriptive sentence on the screen is really a tie to what I'm gonna talk about in the next couple of minutes. Um, Drexel is a comprehensive research university, meaning that we offer a wide variety of academic, social, experiential um, opportunities for our students to learn during their college years. Uh, we're an experiential learning leader. Uh, we've been doing this thing called the co-op program now for over 100 years. Um, it's something that is a huge piece of the Drexel student experience. So we'll certainly discuss that. And then finally, our location in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, which is a huge, an amazing place to live and a great place to go to university. 
Uh, let's get started. Um, on the comprehensive side, Drexel is home to almost 15,000 undergraduate students and they come to the university from almost all 50 states and 120 countries around the world. Um, that diverse student body is a huge reason why I chose to attend the university in the first place. Um, I came from a small high school in the suburbs of Philadelphia where I knew that I wanted to be at a place where I could be a smaller fish in a bigger pond uh, and get to know people who had many different life experiences than me. And that's certainly something that Drexel can provide. Uh, Drexel offers over 80 undergraduate majors. I think this year we're offering 83. Uh, and they're in 13 different colleges and academic units, all the way from engineering, uh, which is where Drexel started 130 years ago. All Drexel was when it was founded was 50 mechanical engineers and a couple of faculty and staff members um, into the health sciences and business and our College of Arts and Sciences, those classic education opportunities for students at the collegiate level, um, all the way to our College of Media Arts and Design, where we have 17 programs, including 10 ranked in the top 10 in the United States. Uh, so we have a really wide diversity of academic offerings for our students, um, all the way from those hard sciences to the fine arts and studio art. Uh, I think something really cool about Drexel is that your friends and your uh, clubs and student organizations or your roommates are going to have such a vast, vastly different in academic interest than you, um, but you'll still be able to have a really great shared experience. Um, our student to faculty ratio is just 10 to 1 and our median class size is only 19. Um, that is not normal for a university of our size and a huge reason for that is thanks to the fact that we send thousands of our students off campus every single year to work uh, and uh, bringing our on campus study population down closer to 10,000 students. Learning happens in many different ways at Drexel. Um, obviously in the academic classroom, you are going to have to take classes and listen to lectures and uh, write essays and do homework and um, do all of those things that help you get a degree in a, in a more classic academic environment. Uh, but you're also gonna learn in many other ways. Uh, Drexel is what's called an R1 research institution, which has the highest tier of academic research designation here in the United States. Uh, us and 35 other schools have that designation and that's something that we're really, really proud of. Uh, basically what that means is there's a lot of research happening here all of the time. Uh, you can get involved in research starting your first academic year. Um, in fact, I did three years of paid research in the School of Business here at Drexel. So if you're, especially if you're interested in engineering and the health sciences, um, there's tons of opportunities to stay engaged in research. Um, that really helps complement your learning as well as uh, supplement your income um, when uh, attending the university. Uh, also, Drexel has 160 different study abroad programs in 60 countries on six continents. So if you want to go away for seven or 10 or 14 days over an academic break, you can do that. Um, if you want to go away for one of our 10 week academic terms, you can do that. You can even go away for six months in a co op program uh, and work in a foreign country if that's something that you're interested in. I've mentioned this word co op a couple of times, and it's a big, important piece of Drexel. Uh, co op stands for cooperative education, and it's the idea that your in classroom learning needs to cooperate with real world professional experiences. Co ops are not just internships, they are full time jobs. Uh, they're not short eight or 10 week experiences. They are six months in length. Um, the vast majority of them are paid positions over 85% at an average salary of about $19,000 $19, in six months. Um, so our students are earning really amazing experiences to add to their resume, but they're also earning really great uh, salaries that can help supplement their income as a, as a college student. Uh, this is uh, a program that's completely sponsored and supported by Drexel. Uh, we have a job board of over 1,600 employers um, that posts somewhere between six and 7,000 jobs annually to our job database. And that's where the vast majority of Drexel students find their, um, find their uh, jobs. Uh, almost 95% of Drexel students do at least one six-month co-op. Um, and actually 60% of Drexel students do three, totaling 18 months of full-time work experience. Those students choose to go to school for five years in order to do it. It is a much different structure than most other universities in the US, but something that really differentiates us and gives students the opportunity to develop really strong resumes during their times in undergrad so that they can go out into the professional workforce and be successful. Also, uh, it's totally okay for you to be a college student for an extra year. Uh, you're gonna have the rest of your life to be a, a, an adult working uh, with, with the problems of that, that come with that. Um, so being able to be a college student for one extra year is not the worst thing in the whole world. Um, Drexel is home to 11 different residence halls uh, where students live for at least their first year and many through all four years of their undergraduate experience. Uh, we have almost 400 clubs and student organizations, 30 fraternities and sororities, 70 uh, cultural, intercultural, religious, and identity-based organizations. Um, 
uh, 60 club intramural sports, 20 division one sports uh, that we play in the Colonial Athletic Association. Basically, um, there's a lot of stuff going on here all the time. Um, something that I really like about Drexel is that it is a big place. So there is a lot happening constantly, but uh, it's really an amazing way to be able to make a big place like Drexel small um, by being engaged in these communities around our campus. Uh, being able to create a group of friends that can be with you for the rest of your life is a huge piece of college and something that we talk about all the time as being a huge advantage of, of our life here at Drexel. Uh, finally, uh, Drexel is located in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania in a neighborhood called University City, which we share with our friends at the University of Pennsylvania. Um, so you get a really interesting combination of being in a, a campus in a neighborhood committed to the student experience while being in the sixth largest city in the United States as well. Um, here is my contact information, and I'm also going to throw it in the chat box. Uh, thanks for joining us here tonight, and please let me know anything that, you're, that I can do to help. Um, thanks, Kelsey. Thank you, Kevin. Now that we've heard from all six schools, I'm going to invite our presenters to join me to answer one more question for everyone. Um, and that question is, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And unfortunately, Waynesburg University did have to leave. Um, so we're just going to go in the same order in which we started um, with the five schools left. So Bloomsburg, you can kick it off. So I think it's important to have conversations and do career exploration, especially if you're a student in high school in your junior, senior year in high school. And how you do that is by talking to different professionals, talking to your teachers, talking to your counselors, the guidance office, and having conversations. Uh, so I think that's important. Very simply, have conversations, ask questions. Uh, one piece of advice I always give students is to brag about themselves on the application, because uh, typically it is basically a piece of paper online. Um, so we want to hear as much as we can about you. Tell us everything you've ever done. Tell us everything from uh, uh, throughout high school. That way we can see how great you are. Um, I definitely recommend. I know that the college search process can be daunting. So I always say to students that um, don't fear it uh, because fear will do one of two things to you. It'll either keep you mired down in fear or it'll propel you into success, but that choice is yours. So as um, some of my esteemed colleagues have said, use the resources that are available uh, to you. Talk to your guidance counselors, teachers. Um, if you know you want to go in a certain field, find someone in that field, talk to them about what they like, what they don't like what schools um, they considered, and, and of course, always um, visit sooner rather than later, but don't let fear hold you back as you uh, start the college search process, because we're all here to help you. I think my biggest advice for anyone going through the college search is to have a plan. Um, as Stephanie was just saying, senior year can be a lot like it can just be a lot. You have school, you have homework, you have practices, clubs you're involved in, friendships to maintain, a family life to have, and you're looking for colleges, trying to visit schools, submit your applications, et cetera. You're doing all of the things. One of the biggest things that is going to be helpful when you're going into college is being able to time map and really plan out your calendar. So my biggest advice is to keep a calendar and have your calendar tell you what to do. Um, really that's like being organized is my biggest thing. So that's my biggest advice. <laughs> I'll finish up here by giving a, a really specific piece of advice around the essay, because I think that's something that a lot of people ask questions about. Please write your essay about one thing. Uh, pick one topic that you care about that's important to you um, and spend a couple hundred words telling us why that's important to you. Uh, I know that's really simplified and I know it's really scary to pick what your topic is, but that's really all it is, is picking one thing that you care about and telling, about, telling us about it for a couple hundred words. Um, don't just recount your entire activities list in the essay because we literally just read it right before we read your essay. Um, so so please, please, please pick just one topic um, when you're writing your essay. That was some great advice. Thank you everyone for sharing. Um, and thank you everyone for attending this session today. Um, we are about to close out. So when you do close out of the window, there will be a link to a very quick five question survey, but we'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. You'll be able to find this session's recording, as well as all the other sessions recordings at strivescan.com slash PCACAC. Thank you all so much. Thank you to our wonderful presenters, and I hope everyone 
It's a wonderful evening. Thank you.